Hey everybody, welcome back to Grill and Feet. I'm Vanessa. Today I'm going to be doing my six month review on my Pit Boss 700 FB series wood pellet grill. Stay tuned. So I'm just going to start off with a bit of an overview of the um, pellet grill itself. It provides about 700 square inches of cooking space if you include that second tier. Uh, it has cast iron grill racks to cook on. The temps range for about 180 degrees Fahrenheit to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Has a digital control board. It's fueled by wood pellets and has a 20 pound hopper and has a flame broiler adjuster plate. Let's start off with the hopper. So a modification I have done I like to change my pellets quite often. I do have like the three different uh, flavors or blends I like to use per se. I have the hickory blend, the competition blend, and the apple blend. And I usually fill this up so I don't have to worry about um, it voiding or running out of pellets. But every time I went to go empty the pellets, um, there'd always be like stuff stuck in there. I'd have to like stick things through these grates here. So what I actually did was I took a Phillips head screwdriver and I took out the screws uh, on either side there and so I'm able to then lift this open and then I can you know take out pellets this way or I can take it apart uh, from the back there and they can drain through that way but then also I still have this protected on it in case if anything if I don't know, this thing was left open and then so you don't get anything in there in one of my very first videos, I showed myself sifting pellets and stuff. Honestly, this is my very first wood pellet grill. I didn't know what to expect for, and I never worked with pellets before, so I didn't know what the dust content was like, and some other videos I'd seen showed people sifting pellets, so I was like, hey, I probably should do that. I did that once, and I never did it again, so I just want to make that clear. You do not have to sift your pellets. I was pretty happy. Um, with the very first time I opened up these bags and I've not had any problems with not sifting my pellets. So this next part of the video, I'm just actually gonna list out some of the cons that I found um, owning one of these Pit Boss wood pellet grills. So my number one con about this wood pellet grill is that the broiler plate on this uh, particular series model does not come with a rod uh, to pull the plate back. And so if you ever want to use the broiler option, you literally have to take off the grates and then use your tongs or like gloves or something like that to push and slide that broiler plate over. I know a bunch of the newer series models have those and even the bigger ones. Uh, so that's just my number one con on that. Honestly, I wish it had a smokestack. Other, again, other series, other models uh, do come with a smokestack. If you do want to add a smokestack to it, it is optional. You can take uh, that plate off and add a, modif like a modified smokestack to it. You will then also have to cover up uh, these five uh, exhaust holes in the back here as well. That modification runs about $40 US. Honestly, um, I think it's more of a looksy thing. All right, going back to the broiler plate. Um, the sear option on this grill I feel is pretty small. You're only able to maybe sear two steaks, maybe four burgers at one time. So if this thing was full of burgers um, and you wanted to have a sear on them, Again, you would have to take all the burgers off, move the broiler plate over, and then start all your searing on your burgers, but only maybe getting like four at a time done. To be honest, I don't ever really use this, uh, the broiler option very much just because of that. I find uh, for me, like if I wanted to do a sear or something like that, I'll just put it on a cast iron inside on the stove. As for the hopper, I do wish it had a bit of a steeper slope. So let's see if I can get this. So, I'm not sure if I can really get the angle here. But as you can see, the angle of the slope is not very steep. So, as, like, let's just say if you're doing a really long cook, 
you have to actually constantly stir your pellets like maybe every couple hours just to make sure there doesn't there doesn't end up being a void essentially this is if i can do it here this is a, this is pretty much what it would kind of look like if i can do it here if you start running low on pellets they'll start kind of voiding close to the auger there and then these pellets won't move down and so eventually it'll just cause a void right there. Uh, I've never had that problem because I like to, <laughs> I just like to watch my cook anyway so I'm always constantly checking everything but uh, yeah I just wish me like there was a bit, a bit of a steeper hopper just so you don't have to uh, turn your pellets as much. All right, another con, this second rack. As you can see, there's probably maybe five, six inches tops between that first and second tier. So I feel like if you're not, I guess, like I've had burgers filled this grill and I've had the, I've tried to use the second tier on there. It, it makes it very difficult if you want to flip something. I think the only thing that maybe works with that second tier being there is probably ribs. I also really wish that this uh, also had some hooks to hang your utensils on and uh, some shelves, you know, to put your cooked food on or something. I did notice that, you know, people do their modifications to it. They'll add a, you know, a shelf uh, to this side and then a, another shelf to this side. I mean, sometimes I have <laughs> hooked my tongs on there, but most of the time I just put all my food on top of the hopper there. Or, I'll grab a table nearby and put my stuff on that. Uh, like I said, the other there's other bigger uh, and other uh, series of models out there that do come with those options. So those were just some of my cons. Now onto the pros. I just really want to start off by saying how excellent Pit Boss's customer service is. At the beginning, I did have a lot of huge temperature swings. Um, you know, I would set it at 250 and be running at 350, some, like 400 sometimes. So I emailed and I also called Pit Boss and they returned and they were able to help me. They sent me a new temperature probe as well as a new control panel. And pretty much right away, those temperature swings and the problems were fixed. Along with the control panel and the temperature probe, they also sent me four samples of their Pit Boss spices. I've only tried one of them so far and... Uh, Oh, I'm looking forward to trying the other ones as well. Let's talk about the size of this thing. It provides 700 square inches of cooking space. That's including if you include the second tier. Even if I don't have that extra tier on, I think this is the perfect size. I've been able to like fit three chickens on there. I can probably fit two roasts. I can fit, you know, a huge pork butt. I don't know what that was. <laughs> but, uh... <clears throat> Honestly, I would not go any smaller though. I believe the next size down is the 340 and I've looked at them and I've looked at things I've cooked and I don't think I would have enjoyed it as much as I do this one. So I think I wouldn't, de I wouldn't go smaller, but I could go bigger, but I think this is the perfect size for me and even just to start out as well. As I was saying before, I do, this is my first uh, wood pellet grill. Uh, so this is completely new to me. I love the concept of setting it and forgetting it. I do like to tend to my barbecue though, so... But I love that the option is there for me, so... I like knowing that I can just pretty much set, set my temp probe to go off at, you know, when the meat comes up to a certain, certain temperature, and then I can just walk away, and then as soon as I hear it going off, I can just tend to it when I need to. So like I said before, I use Pit Boss pellets exclusively. I have used the Traeger ones once, um, but I didn't enjoy them as well. Um, and honestly, where I live, Pit Boss pellets are pretty accessible and they're also pretty cheap too. So I've just, because I haven't had any problems with them, I just tend to keep going with them, honestly. <clears throat> uh, here in BC, Canada, uh, I pay about $20 for a 20 pound bag so it's about a dollar a pound so depending on the I guess on how high the temperature is you can you can run about one pound to three pounds per hour so relatively I find because I mostly do low and slow on this 
on this grill. I don't go through pellets as often. And so therefore I feel like it's a really good like cost savings. I like how user friendly it is. The instructions are really simple and with the amount of other YouTube videos that are out there, um, it was really easy to use. Like I said, this is my first uh, pellet grill I've ever had and I feel like that I've done very well with this thing. So my final opinion on the Pit Boss 700 FB is I would definitely get one. The only thing is, I don't think they even make these anymore, but they do have the 700 Classic, which I'm pretty sure is almost the same. Um, if you cannot find this one, I do suggest going up to the 820. I believe that these grills are, like I said, user-friendly, easy to use, and for the price, if you get them on sale, and it will definitely be worth it. I also want to end this video by saying this, not only is this a six month review for my pit boss, it's also a six month, uh, I guess, anniversary for the start of my YouTube channel. I am nearly at 200 subscribers um, and all I want to do is thank everybody for their support in watching my videos, for the comments, the likes, even the dislikes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's uh, all like a learning curve for me and honestly I didn't think I was really going to get anyone. I mostly just did this channel for myself and if anybody was interested, I did maybe like family and friends kind of thing. But um, no, yeah, I just want to thank everybody for their support and uh, I don't really know what else to say. <laughs>